so good morning everyone in our last class uh, i asked you to uh, just uh, i showed you uh, this frequency and the amplitude uh, response how to calculate those things uh, at zero and pi uh, radians and then i asked you to do uh, for uh, the all other uh, yeah, uh, frequency components okay i hope all of you have done it <coughs> now moving forward <coughs> coming to the filters you need to understand what are the ideal frequency response of a given filter if you see a low pass filter see a low pass filter it will be having a frequency response from 0 to fc and we have written pi why pi because as i already told you at pi the maximum frequency it should be present okay so beyond pi usually the frequency components they repeat itself so when we will be going for the digital filter uh, designing we will be mainly concentrating on 0 to pi and uh, then we will be repeating it uh, either in the 0 to 2 pi in the region or in the minus pi to pi region depending upon whatever suits good for our calculation okay so that will come later on <coughs> however let's see in the 0 to pi region uh, how this um, low pass filter and other filters they have the uh, this frequency response so in the low pass filter zero is the low ha uh, sir mai class mein hu aap mujhe baad mein call kijiye ha so what i was saying in the low pass filter we have start with zero and uh, it uh, we go up to a cut off frequency fc where the amplitude response or the frequency response is considered to be one okay so <clears throat> in the normalized uh, yeah, uh, frequency response okay then in the hpf high pass filter uh, it starts from fc and it ends at pi why because uh, in as we already uh, discussed that pi will be having the maximum uh, frequency within a signal component then in the band pass filter we will be having two uh, this things so within the 0 to pi region there will be fc1 and fc2 uh, cut off uh, regions within that region we will be having a high response then band reject filter again over here there will be uh, two cut off regions fc1 and fc2 however in this case unlike in the band pass filter we will be having a dead zone within between this region and outside this region we will be having the uh, high frequency response then in the notch filter at a particular frequency the frequency component would be uh, zero okay what happened looking dull are you looking totally dull not interested in the class hmm so coming to the <coughs> uh, this frequency response how we look into the frequency response so you see uh, here in we are having a z plane so its uh, x axis it is real z and y axis is imaginary z okay please keep this in mind okay in s plane we are having real component in the x axis and in the y axis we are having j omega real component means sigma okay here in frequency is in the y axis however in the z plane <coughs> in the x axis we have real z in the y axis we have imaginary z okay and the frequency component is the unit circle during the comprehensive viber people do mistake over here also so that's why i am repeating time and again keep this in mind that in s plane real x axis is the real axis and the y axis is the imaginary axis which is also the frequency axis in the z plane x axis is the real z and imaginary z okay 
and the frequency axis is the unit circle. Keep this in mind. <coughs> now suppose we have uh, placed an uh, placed a pole over here. So then we start looking into the frequency axis from the top. Okay. So as if say for example you are in having a table top and over the table top you are having the rubber membrane we discussed about the rubber membrane concept in the uh, s plane over here also uh, we will try to analyze the frequency response to the rubber membrane concept only so we will be looking into this table top where we are having the rubber membrane from here okay so at a particular point we will be having a um, pole suppose this is zero and somewhere we are having pi and we are having this pole and we are looking over here so we will be getting something like this okay so this is what it has been shown over here at low frequency since the pole is nearer to the uh, this uh, frequency axis we are having a high frequency and as we are going towards the pi we are having you know, some uh, we are having a lower amplitude value over here okay but we conventionally what we do if you see we plot the values from 0 to pi okay so we just convert it over here so we have put it as 0 to pi and the maximum amplitude what we get it is given by a okay so which is regarded as the gain of the filter okay now we have talked about over here see fc fc fc1 fc2 so what are these these are cut off uh, cut off frequency regions that means below that region we consider that uh, if it is a low pass filter higher than the cut off uh, region we will say that the signal components have been suppressed whereas in the case of high pass filter below the cutoff region we will say that the signal uh, these noise components or the signal components they have been suppressed okay similarly in band pass filter within outside the range of fc1 and fc2 everything will be suppressed in band reject filter within the range of fc1 and fc2 all the frequency components will be suppressed right so in this way we go now the question arises at what point we will be taking this cutoff points that is an important thing usually what we say is that what is whatever is our maximum gain divided by root 2 it is regarded as the cutoff point of a filter or the cutoff frequency of a filter that means the frequency at which the gain of a filter it becomes a by root 2 it is regarded as the cutoff point okay <coughs> in db it is regarded as the minus of 3 db minus of 3 db now what is the reason why we have chosen minus 3 db as the cutoff frequency this is because at minus of 3 db or a by root 2 the power of the signal components it becomes half and it is regarded as the critical uh, point beyond which we uh, where we consider that we have suppressed the signal because power is falling down more than 50 percent okay so <coughs> when we have plot uh, when we have placed this uh, pole over here we have got this plot over here uh, we are having a then it is coming down and it is coming down to a particular value at pi which is very minimal and then we calculate a by root 2 and after calculating the a by root 2 we calculate the fc1 okay. we calculate the fc1 <coughs> so suppose i give you a numerical that places a pole and a zero at a particular locations and if I ask you to find out the cutoff frequencies, so will you be able to find out? Technically, yes. So you have what you have to do? You have to find out the frequency response, the amplitude response. Because if you see over here, we have talked about the amplitude response. 
Okay. So we have talked about this amplitude response, and from there, uh, you can say that where wherever um, uh, the point does uh, uh, the frequency, uh, the amplitude gain, uh, or the gain becomes uh, uh, this uh, a by root two. At that point, we will be because the point, uh, the frequency points corresponding to those point or points will be having the cutoff frequencies. Okay. <clears throat> Now the thing is that we have considered uh, this thing. Now it is a, the first example. It is a single pole filter. Okay. Now I have the um, scope. to include one zero okay what is our condition to design a realizable filter my condition is that the filter what we will be designing it should have the higher number of poles higher or equal number of poles as compared to the number of the zeros okay so in the first case we only had a single pole so i have a scope to introduce a zero in the uh filter in the designing aspect okay so when i have included this zero over here so my frequency response it is now this one a and at pi i am be i will be having a value of zero okay in the previous case if you see over here there were some residual amplitude however in this case the amplitude response it becomes totally zero okay now in the third case suppose i want a frequency response where the cutoff value would be say uh, at pi by 2 okay so forget this one so it would be pi by 2 so <coughs> if you see over here in the second case it is impossible for me to control my cut off frequency okay however if i can introduce another zero near to the uh, what you call the near to the pi by 2 it is possible for me to design a specific filter okay now how that is so so if you see this black marking where i have marked as the 3 so i have introduced one zero to compensate the gain of this uh, 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 to make this filter realizable now what happens i have put a zero over here but however i am having only a single pole over here so the filter becomes non realizable so what i have to do i have to put another pole at the same location so i have put another pole at the same location now the xz due to the poles it would be 1 by d1 multiplied by d2 okay so <clears throat> approximately your gain at uh, why i am telling approximately because these zeros they will also be contributing towards the gain okay however since the pole is nearer to the dc frequency its effect will be much much higher so it is it will be approximately a square well then since you have place a zero over here so this would be the uh, zero frequency or the placement of the zero you can say fre uh, frequency at which zero has been placed zero has been placed okay now under that condition by tuning the placement of these zeros we will be able to find a sweet point where we can have a cut off frequency at pi by 2 okay however in the fourth case over here if you see we are having a similar scenario but i am having a pole over here first pole and the second pole is near to the pi by 2 okay 
in that case your gain would be different however if you see i have shown the gain response as the similar so both of these these are basically uh, you can say i have shown you the normalized response normalized frequency response normalized frequency response means uh, i have considered the gain as one in both the cases okay so just to make you understand now what happens so in this case in the fourth case since i have placed a pole near to the pi by uh, pi by 2 if you see the rate of decay over here it is much much slower as compared to the case where we were having both the poles near to the zeros okay now if i place a pole a zero just after this thing so we are able to control the cut off frequency much more proactively or in a much more better manner okay why this is so aapka <coughs> amplitude response say for example it is something like this so you have placed a pole over here and you want a cut off frequency somewhere in between and you are placing a zero say somewhere over here so see the pole is fixed just by moving this zeros either to the left hand side or the right hand side you can play with the game in a much more efficient manner okay <clears throat> now the placement of the pole near to the frequency uh, near to the uh, cut off frequency it has given you that opportunity okay it has given you that opportunity so if you place a pole and if you place a zero nearer to the pole that can give you a more better flexibility in designing the filter with specific cut off frequencies in a much better manner okay <clears throat> now let us see the high pass filters so in the previous case if you see all of these they were low pass filters okay all of these in case 1 2 3 4 they were low pass filters now let us take the example of the high pass filter <coughs> which is basically the opposite of the low pass filter okay why if you remember in the low pass filter we placed the poles nearer to the zero in high pass filter we will be placing the poles nearer to the in this thing okay now when you have we have placed a pole over here so at zero frequencies there will be some distortions there will be some distortions okay now <coughs> you keep in mind the term hd high pass filter it also acts as a differentiator it also acts a differentiator okay <clears throat> that will be discussing at a later stage um, what happens uh, with the differentiator and you know, what happens with the high pass filter but <clears throat> today we need to understand over here that high pass filter it acts as a differentiator you keep this in mind now what does a differentiator do differentiator finds changes within a uh, signal if you are having a base signal where there is not much change it will not give you any output however if the signals are cor corroded it will give you some spikes and all these things right now in the first case <coughs> when we have the high pass filter what is ha happening we have seen in the low pass filter if you consider over there at the high frequency component there were some amplitude values that means some signal components were being passed out okay so over here at low frequency some components will be allowed to pass right now due to that allow, uh, allowing of this thing your process signal will also have some noises included into the signal okay then to avoid that what you do place a zero again if you look from here what type of filter it is again it is a high pass filter 
okay <coughs> if you look over here it is again a high pass filter again if you look over here again this is a high pass filter the placement of the um, zeros and the poles which are nearer to a specific frequency component will allow you to control the cut off frequency of the filter in a much better manner okay over here also <coughs> now next is band pass filter it will help you in allowing um, some signals to pass uh, through it so if you see suppose i um, i am considering this pi by 2 as the um, uh, cut off frequency then placing poles across either of this uh, across the pi by 2 it can help us in designing a this thing so it here in this pi by 2 it is the central frequency that means whatever uh, the frequency you are having which range whatever range you want to uh, find out the middle point of that thing say for example if you are uh, if you want to pass 100 hertz and 150 hertz if you want to uh, pass the frequency component within this range then the central frequency it would be 125 hertz okay so any band pass filter they are being uh, categorized or they are being uh, what do you call and they are uh, being uh, uh, their specification are being mentioned as the central frequency plus the bandwidth so how much bandwidth uh, you will be needing okay suppose i say central frequency it may be uh, say for example i want to take uh, this central frequency as say for example for uh, uh, for my is if i take um, 150 as the central frequency so the central frequency it may be same for 100 and 200 hertz bandwidth and also it may be the same for 125 to 175 hertz right so in both the cases the central frequency would be 150 hertz however what is the bandwidth so what is the range in which we want to uh, allow the signals to pass through it that plays an important role also okay so these two criteria the central frequency and the bandwidth it gives us an indication where we need to place the poles or the zeros okay so similarly so if you see across the central frequency we will place the poles and again if you see at this um, higher and the lower frequency values you are having certain amplitude values and that uh, they can be suppressed by placement of the zeros at these locations okay then comes band reject filter again if you see i just need to place zero and we have the usual poles over here so it to that as a band reject filter however if you want to have a very sharp cut off you can add uh, two more uh, poles nearer to the zero okay then in the notch filter a specific frequency would be suppressed so say i want to suppress the frequency that would be pre uh, present at pi by 2 radians so i will be placing the zero at that location so this is how we go for the designing of the filters by the placement of poles and zeros in the digital domain okay so do you have any question okay now in the band reject filter uh, i forgot to uh, give you the explanation of the frequency response when this um, red poles they are not there so it would be much lower however when we have placed the poles so you see they become much more steeper the frequency response is much more steeper okay <coughs> now the next thing which comes is the radial positioning okay so what do you mean by radial positioning
the word radial it comes from the word radius okay uh, another before going over there another important thing whenever you will be writing for the exam please do not forget to put real z imaginary z okay just for the sake of making you understand i have not put the things over here but whenever you are writing in the exams make sure that you are writing all the coordinates because everything uh, carries marks okay so in the radial positioning also if you see real z imaginary z okay then if you place a pole <coughs> suppose here so from 0 to the maximum radius that is the 1 we can draw a line now across this line i can move this pole or the zero whatever you want to place so across this line i can move this one so when you do this that positioning is called radial position that means across the radius across a specific line or across a specific angle you are changing the distance of the pole from the frequency axis that is called the radial position okay <clears throat> so that is called the radial positioning now understanding the radial positioning it is very important okay so for that let us take this uh, specific example <clears throat> the single pole example so in the first case we ha are having pole equal to 0. at 0.9 pole equal to 0.5 and pole equal to 0.3 now if you remember what happens over here it would be equal to 1 by d1 so this would be the highest okay so highest point 0.9 so the distance of the pole to the frequency axis it would be the minimum so you will be having a maximum response in the second case you will be having this response in the third case you will be having this response okay now at the high frequency what will happen this 0.9 pole it will be farthest from here so it will come down basically largest will be having the smallest one and then here it will be say at zero frequency the uh, amplitude response would be say 1 2 3 1 being the highest second highest third highest at pi it would be 3 to 1 okay so it would look something like this let me use another color maybe something like this you will get at pi okay zero and pi why because everything is correlated at one frequency it is nearer to each other and the other frequency it is uh, far away but we are interested in the radial positioning of this thing so radial positioning so we take it at zero to whatever frequency is the nearest one okay so over here if you see as we are moving the pole away from the frequency axis our amplitude response it is decreasing that means the effect of the pole it is decreasing as we move the pole away from the frequency axis okay similarly if you try to 
look into the effect of the zero onto the filter response then here we can place the zero at one because if you place the pole at uh, at the frequency axis the system will may get either unstable or it may become marginally unstable or marginally stable okay so because at that frequency the amplitude the response it will shoot up okay to infinity so that is the uh, reason we cannot place a pole onto the unit circle however there are no such restriction for the zero so we can place the zero at one that means onto the frequency axis 0.5 0.3 okay now when we do this if you see when the pole has been placed at zero or uh, placed at one what is happening the frequency compression or frequency suppression uh, not compression suppression it is the highest and as we are moving the zero away from the frequency axis it is the suppression effect it is reducing a lot okay so in either of the cases where you want to place a pole or you want to place a zero across the radial positioning what would happen the frequency response would be enhanced if you are placing the pale, uh, pole and the zeros nearer to the frequency axis and as you are moving these poles and the zeros there would be an uh, inverse effect on the response okay so placing a pole nearer to the frequency will enhance the gain of the system while placing a pole away from the frequency axis it will reduce the gain of the system on the contrary if you place a zero nearer to the frequency axis it will suppress the uh, frequency components quite significantly on the contrary if you move the zeros away from the frequency axis across the radius it will uh, enhance the gain of the system okay enhance the gain means its activity it would be lowered zeros activity would be lower now there is an interesting scenario where you can place a pole over a zero or vice versa okay so what happens over there so in that case if you see suppose if you are having r1 and r2 uh, not r1 is the radius of the first zero and d1 is the radius of the another uh, of uh, one pole then r2 and d2 there are another set of zeros and poles okay so in this case when we place the zero over a pole or a pole over a zero this r2 it is equal to d2 okay because the location is same so what would happen these would cancel out each other and you get a frequency response wherein there is only this uh, r1 and r2 uh, r1 and d1 uh, zeros and poles which are present okay so if you design a system where you are having only one zero and one pole that is the r1 and d1 it would be having the same response as that of the previous response wherein the second set of zero and pole they have been placed exactly at the same location that means the poles cancels the effect of the zeros or you can also say that the zero affects the uh, uh, cancels the effects of the pole okay now let us take uh, take up another example where we are having z equals to minus 0.9 and we are having poles at uh, 0.9 and 0 0 means the center of the uh, or the 0 0 axis central point of the z axis okay <coughs> now first what we would be doing is that we would be 
finding out the uh, this transfer function so this is the true transfer function and then we will be calculating the z inverse components okay so from the z terms we will be find we can find out the location of the poles and the zeros and from there we can draw the pole zero plot okay similarly uh, similar to the whatever uh, we discussed in our last class we will be finding out the frequency responses over here okay so if you see at 0 it is 90 at 0 0.05 it is uh, at the pi it is 0 0.05 the amplitude response now in the second case i have z equal to 0 0.9 and p at 0 okay now since we are not having this pole we are having a gain of 1.9 at dc frequency which is in time uh, lower over there and at pi we are having 0 0.1 frequency okay because in the previous if, if you see in, over here uh, it was having 0 0.05 our uh, over here we are having 0 0.1 so this change i have not changed the location of the zeros but here in, there is a missing uh, missing of one pole and hence the gain has reduced due to the missing of another pole which was present closer to the DC frequency. Okay. Now that is okay. Now in the third case, I designed a filter like this. Okay. So if you see. I have placed a pole and a zero ex exactly at the same location. Now, if you see the amplitude response, exactly the same as that of the case three, case two and case three, they are having same amplitude response, even though there is one set of extra zeros and the poles. Why that is so? Again, I told you because the radius they become the same for the poles and the zeros at each of the frequencies and pole is f, uh, cancelling the effect of the zero or you can say the vice versa okay however when we will be going for the realization of the filter for the realization of the filter what i told i told that we need a delay component so we need to convert the transfer function into this domain z inverse domain here also over here also some the same thing here also the same thing now here in if you see you will be having the liberty to cancel this one but will you do it no you will not do it if you do it if you cancel the thing over here that means you have totally changed the filter architecture Okay, so the realization would be done taking both the things over here. Okay, then only you will be able to get the components for this say 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. Over here also if you see the transfer function, if you cancel out this thing, from the transfer function then what will happen you will not get this zero and the pole so if you do this you will be getting z equals to zero and z equals to minus of 0 0.9 so you are missing this extra poles and the zeros so though under normal circumstances if you are doing normal uh, um, algebra we would cancel out the both the things while designing the filters whatever has been given don't cancel each other if you cancel those things then your numerical will be incorrect even though your results would be the same yeah. even though the results would be the same that's why i took this example to make you understand what is the significance of these uh, poles and the zeros and their placement into the systems okay again another example with uh, this thing okay so you can go through it
another another an example yeah so before i conclude uh, i would like to discuss this one how much time we have 15 minutes we have okay let me cover this one and if the time remains i can go back to the previous examples so <clears throat> whenever you are having xz in this format and we are being asked to find out the amplitude response and the phase response the way which i told you in the last class that is the basic principle that i told you because you need to understand how the placement of the poles and the zeros they are affecting the frequency response but there is always an easier way to do the things the easier way is this one so what is this suppose you are having a uh, filter something like this so you will change the z or replace the z with e to the power j omega t so when you do that same the same equation it comes up to be h of omega t 1 by 1 plus a e to the power minus j omega t okay right then we can break this down in this fashion 1 plus cos omega t uh, minus of j sin um, omega t okay in the real component and the on this component okay so <coughs> no, this um, this factor sorry so what will be having so we will be having this h of omega t as 1 by a minus jb so we multiply the numerator and the denominator in this fashion so by doing this we get the denominator as the real platform and then a real component and then we get a equals to uh, see, uh, so h of omega t is equal to a plus jb now you find out the modulus under square, uh, under root of a square plus b square and phase is of uh, this thing uh, h of uh, omega t and for that i yesterday i told you that you will be using this chart for the calculation of the phases okay so this is how we will proceed uh, with this we can complete the chapter uh, i think we are left with uh, this one so if you see in this case what happened z uh, z equals to minus of 0.9 so 0 is present over here and you are having poles at 0.9 and 0 So 0.9 is this one and 0 is this one and you see the gain is over here. Okay. Now in the second case, what I have done, I have placed another pole at this location. So see what has happened. This gain it has shot up. Two hundred and ninety, ten times gain. Okay, so when we place a pole over another pole, what it does? It increases the activity of the uh, uh, poles. Okay, so combinedly, the both the poles will be having a very high gain. Okay. in this case we have taken the same thing however we have taken an extra zero so because of that extra zero nearer to the high frequency will be nearer to the to this zero now if you see the separation is much much higher as compared to the no, previous one so you have to keep in mind that when you place a pole over a zero or a zero over a pole they cancel their activity whereas if you place a pole over a pole or a zero over a zero they increases the activity of the either the pole or the zero respectively okay so with this 
uh, I'll be, uh, we are concluding this chapter if you have any questions we can discuss again i would say that uh, i have taught you this thing in bit in a, in a bit faster way because uh, we are shortage of time uh, please go through that 2021 lectures and there uh, i have taught it in a bit slower manner okay and if you have any problems you can ask either of the ts or if you are not satisfied with the uh, with your answers from the ts then you can continue okay so anything you would like to discuss today you have not understood and please practice if you don't practice it will be very difficult for you to clear the exam nothing